Good morning. You ready to put a neck back on this guitar? Me too. It's part three. Hey everyone and welcome back to this part three and what I expect to be the last part on this rework of the Guild JF30 that we've got here. Uh, thanks for following along so far. If you are just joining us, just finding us, be sure and if you haven't already to, to hit that subscribe button, like this video and hit the little bell for the notifications that way you can see what we have coming next and follow along with all of our progress that we have going on here at the uh, studio here in the store and also back at the Mazaku Guitars workshop. And once again, I am here today at the Palin Music Center uh, repair shop here at 1202 South Range 9 in Joplin, Missouri. If you happen to be in the Joplin area and you do need some uh, repair work to be done or uh, some setup or whatever you need done on your gear, bring it on down here and let me take a look at it. If you have any other needs, uh, you want to look into getting some new gear, uh, come out and see Ty and Larry out front. They'd be happy to help you with that as well. Uh, on to the guitar here at hand. Uh, so as you have seen, if you've been following along so far, we took the neck off. We took all of this spruce out and then uh, we reinforced everything on the underneath and uh, put some patches in and glued it all back together, put a little splice in there, um, get everything all good and shored up and we also went ahead and fixed everything up all around here and sealed it off with uh, some glue boost super glue and then some shellac just to get it all cleaned up so now what we need to do is we need to start the preparations for getting the neck attached back on so a few things we're going to need to do first here is we're going to have to reattach the binding and purfling um, this was all loose when this guitar came in because of the way that the uh, neck had caved in it was all just buckled and you can see this piece has already broken off so we're going to be gluing that back in and gluing all this back down so it's seated down nice and secure you know I was thinking about this I remember my initial uh, diagnosis was that I believed that the head block or the braces underneath here had come loose and it was the string tension that caused it to pull in and um, I have seen that before however now that I have got in there and been able to take all these pieces and pull them away and actually look inside it really seemed like the head block was very secure it didn't seem like it had been re-glued at any point but this point under here did kind of seem like it may have been re-glued i'm not for sure um there was some pretty nasty uh glue squeeze out it could have been for from the factory uh but also with that little patch that was here on this side um it it, t it tells me that somebody had tried to make a repair on this already but with the head block being secure and everything being loose up here I think what actually happened was maybe the guitar was sitting up and it fell backwards and then hit the back of the neck on something and then that caused everything to just shift forward and that's what caused the cracks right along here and caused the whole thing to shift down in is because the neck angle just abruptly um, shifted forward that that much and that dramatically in either case I still think that uh, we did the right thing here in taking this apart to get it all realigned back the way it's supposed to be uh, you know something else that I think could have contributed to this problem is that I know that when I learned to build guitars I have a, a head block that goes right here and then of course they have like they do in here as you saw in the mirror underneath you have the upper face brace which goes right across here it's tucked underneath the kerfing on each side but then they also had in here a, a separate mahogany block that connects the head block uh, right up to almost up to this upper face brace and then what you have here is I believe you have a weakness 
in this point of stress right here. So what I do and what I have seen many many guitar makers do is you have a cross grain flat piece much like the one the little patch that I put right in here um, but it actually goes all the way across in place of that block that goes between the head block and the upper face brace. So that way what you have is you have support along all of this long grain all the way across and so it's going to be a lot less likely for all of this to break apart and move on you. But I feel like with this brace that we have in here we have much more of that same idea so I'm, I'm pretty confident that we're going to avoid uh, having that same type of problem again. So on to the binding now. So I went ahead and I, I tore my tape. I got it ready before we, before we hit record. And uh, this is all we're going to do. We're just going to use tape just like we're doing a regular uh, binding installation. Except we're only going to do from about here to here on each side. So I'm just going to use some of the glue boost um, super thin glue here with a whip tip on it. And we're just going to squirt some super glue right here in that purfling and then we're going to put some right here in the binding channel as well trying not to make a huge mess everywhere I want to try to keep my fingers away from any contact points because the oils from your skin will cause the super glue to react now I'm just going to take that and we are installing binding. Maybe I might have got a little too much super, or I may have got a little too much tape ready, but it's all right. And that's why we have extra tape. Okay, so we've got that nice and seated down. All right. And we'll get ourselves a few more pieces of tape. And we remember this piece that had broken off. All right, and instead of using my um, glue boost accelerator on that, I'm just going to let that sit and dry naturally. Um, the accelerator works great as far as curing it. Uh, really fast uh, but it also causes it to bubble a little bit um, for this particular application I want to just let it sit and then I'll pull the tape and then I'll clean it up afterwards
So now that we're at this point, we're ready to put the neck back on and now I'm realizing that I'm glad that we went ahead and did all of this stuff that we did, um, taking the neck off and uh, re-securing everything on the inside here because now that I have everything in the position where it's supposed to be, now I can clearly see that our neck angle is bad and so um, we do need to adjust this neck angle a little bit. So I spent quite a bit of time getting the neck angle right. I didn't really spend a whole lot of time explaining a lot of that. I think maybe that's something we can do in a future video. That's really just all about the neck reset. I think with this one we're just going to kind of hit the high points and just uh, focus on the main part of this uh, job, which is really just getting this thing back together. So 
with all of the neck angle that we had to change, um, we also did lose quite a bit of material uh, off of our neck heel. And so what that does is that uh, continues to push that angle back in like this. And so it really makes this joint uh, really loose and sloppy, which uh, I, I mentioned before, it seemed like it was a little sloppy kind of to begin with. So I knew I was going to want to put um, some shims in here to tighten that up. So what I'm using here, I've got a little piece of maple uh, and I'm going to put that right here on the heel, um, which is also maple. And I got this from this, what I call a ribbon of maple. This is uh, stuff that I use when I'm putting the purfling um, on my own custom guitars that I build. Um, I, I make the purfling out of this here and I just take little bitty slices of this and I use that as my purfling. So this here is something that I milled down in the shop uh, already and I had it ready to go so I decided to go ahead and use this. What I do is um, I cut this down and then I sand it down with the drum sander until it gets down to about 20 thousandths of an inch and um, so I figured you know that's it's pretty thin it's made out of maple the same material as the neck so I'll just go ahead and use some of that since I have it lying around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this right here on the side of the the dovetail tenon. As you can see we've got the neck put back on, we've got the strings on, we've got everything set up. We actually even went ahead and put in an LR bags uh, pickup system inside here. Um, I didn't show any of that because I figured those are things that we can show and get more in depth in on a later video. But the point is after all that work we've got this thing uh, playing great and I think the owner is really going to be satisfied with this. If you've been satisfied with uh, watching this video, again, if you haven't already, be sure and hit the like, subscribe, notification buttons, and who knows what's going to be in here next time you come by, so stay tuned. Mm -hmm.